What to do to die today? Da 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 da. Hello, we are the three Black Pratt grads, and today we are going to be talking about women photographers. It is the end of March. We apologize for not getting to this topic a little sooner, but we are talking today about women photographers uh, because it is Women's History Month. And this was a suggestion that Greg actually had a couple weeks ago, but we had some things on the schedule. So thank you, Greg, for making the suggestion. So I picked it this week from my suggestion so that we can make sure we got this in in the month. Anyway, one way to describe women's photographers is underappreciated, particularly when it comes down to the history of photography. Uh, there are scores of women who have made tremendous contributions. We only hear about a few at any given time. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the ones who uh, I felt were important to the type of work that I do. And at the end, I'll just throw up some pictures real quick of, of what I do. And you can kind of see how um, some of them influenced me and how I'm happy about some other things. And then uh, the guys will talk about uh, other women photographers that they uh, are interested in, in presenting today. So, Ken, if you go to the first slide. Slide? You still call them slides? Yeah, right? You know, that's the whole, I, I wish you get a carousel projector and do that. Oh, my gosh. People are like, carousel? What is he talking right. about? With I, horses? Yeah, right? <laughs> Tell me about it. The uh, uh, I've talked about Bernice Abbott a couple of times already. I just want to say one more thing. She's really, really known for architectural work, but she was basically a generalist in what they used to call straight photography. And she's really important. She's even did work in the 30s of uh, of uh, all these skyscrapers as New York was becoming, particularly Manhattan, was becoming skyscraper laden. And her work, and she also is very known for taking photographs of the old Penn Station in New York. Uh, that uh, has been uh, thus replaced with a, a more modern one. And then it was once again replaced just uh, last year with Patrick Moynihan Station. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a you know it's a real nifty place. It's a very difficult place to photograph. Ken did some nice work there. But I wanted to show you this one uh, picture because when Ken showed us uh, this picture, uh, I wound up going over there to take a look at the place and I took the same picture and I kept saying, I've seen this image somewhere before. And it turns out that the one on the left is one of Bernice Abbott's most famous photographs since 1932 in New York City at night. And on the right is a photograph of a chandelier that hangs down from one of the main entrances of the station. So I thought it was really interesting that uh, in designing that station, they used a, uh, a, 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 a a symbol of New York City, but it's also reminiscent of, of someone who spent a lot of time documenting not only New York City, but also the old Penn Station. That's all I was going to say about Bernice Abbott, except for one last thing. She also worked at MIT for during the 50s, documenting uh, uh, physics, uh, 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 documenting phenomenon physics, uh, in, uh, me, phenomenon in physics, so that they could have images to illustrate uh, uh, different aspects of, of the physical sciences. We can go to the next uh, slide. Kodachrome? Ectochrome? <laughs> yeah, right. Might be Kodachrome. This might be Kodachrome and uh, Triax and all. I don't know what film stocks they were using. Uh, so I apologize. But this particular artist this is a collage that I put together with several images of Louise Dahl Wolf. Now, she is a photographer who worked for 22 years from 19, I think it's 36 to 1958, at Harper's Bazaar. And a lot of the uh, idea of the travel photographer, excuse me, the travel fashion is really kind of rooted in. Uh, the work that she did for Harper's Bazaar. And it would help uh, women uh, have this idea that there's an exotic place. And this is, you know, it starts in the 30s, but it, it kind of goes from, you know, the political beginnings of World War II all the way through to post-war affluence for the Americans. And she is someone who helped develop what they called the American look because they couldn't get... Uh, uh, they had difficulty getting European fashions during World War II. And so uh, the rise, the real notoriety of the fashion magazines 
really came about from the 30s to the 50s, and she was part of that. And so you'll see that, you know, she used adept at using natural light as well as studio lighting. Uh, and there's a documentary somewhere around, uh, and there's a book called Painting with Light. It's Louise Dahl Wolf. And she was someone who I remember seeing her work uh, while I was at school. We'd go to this place called a photographer's place, and we could buy any book. And I'm, I think wow. it was there. It was either there or Barnes and Noble. I don't know. Which yeah, Is right. Is that photographer's place still still around? No. Oh no. But no. Oh, before, before the web, you know, you had to go to specialized bookstores to find, you know, books on subjects, or you had to go to a bookstore or go to a library and ask a librarian. It was a very difficult task getting information that you weren't already aware existed. You know, uh, so she was really, really, really good, and so. Uh, She's someone whose work I still to this day refer to as uh, really the ideal of how to do fashion photography. You can go to the next slide. Mama, don't take my Kodachrome. Mama, don't take my Kodachrome. Didn't they, didn't they take Kodachrome away and then they put it back? They uh, did. No. That was the best. I love some Kodachrome. So now we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to hyper jump all the way from the 50s all the way up to last year. And what you'll see now is the, uh, a part of the landing page of a young woman named Kennedy Carter. And Kennedy Carter holds the distinction of being the first black person to photograph the cover of British Vogue, right? Mm -hmm. Ever. Okay. And so... Uh, that's Beyonce cover that uh, she did for them. And if you go to her landing page, you will see that this is uh, what I found when I was there. And as you scroll to the right, you get the entire uh, 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 suite of the type of work uh, that's important to her. And I did see a little bit of uh, an interview with her. And, and, and from what I understand, she's really very much interested in photographing our people. And we'll see. Sorry, sure, go ahead. I'm, say, I'm sure if you ask her to photograph someone else, she, you know, she might she'll work it out, whatever, or think about it and give you an honest answer. But from what she said, she said she really enjoys photographing our people, and that's really it. Now, you had a question, sir. No, uh, was she uh, doing uh, like, uh, gosh, the church, the church lady hats, like the uh, the mother church mothers with the church hat, the church lady hats? Did she do that series? I don't know if she did the series, but I know in the landing page, I just really quickly looked through it. Okay. Uh, from what I saw, it's a blend on that page of all of the, like what it is to be a black person uh, pretty much in, in the South. Yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have the artifice that, you know, a lot of people try to apply to, uh, you know, an experience when documenting something. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, we try to make it look palatable to us and whatever. She just gets the photo the way she feels as, as, as it, if it resonates for her, that's how she takes it. She's good with it. Okay. Yeah. And cool. she's young. She's, she's, she's under 30. And I, I say kudos to her. And I think that's, you know, that's really great. That's fantastic. And mm -hmm. then the next slide. I don't remember who did the church lady hats, but that was a great series. I feel bad. I'm going to have to look that up now. Now, this is Sue Bryce. A lot of people don't know Sue Bryce. I think she's from New Zealand. And then uh, she went from New Zealand to uh, Australia. And uh, then she did some things in New York. But I'm pretty sure she also worked for Harper's Bazaar. Uh, certainly not in the 50s or anything like that. But more recently, probably in the early 2000s. I don't know exactly. But she has a number of web pages. And this was the only one that uh, I could find the top image uh, that really kind of shows uh, what uh, her work is, is, is like without the the, without a lot of the text. I mean, she's really inter integrates text with her pages. Uh, and that's because she comes from a magazine aesthetic. And so much so that you see that fold, you see that, that band uh, next to the figure on the left? Right? Because that's actually Sue. That band is to replicate the bend 
of a page that you would see in a magazine when holding it in your lap or on a table. And so uh, for a long time, she was a natural light photographer. And um, I don't know exactly which of these images are natural light, but for many years, all she worked in was natural light. And she really worked with her subjects to get these poses. And I found that the teaching that she does was extraordinarily And um, you extraordinarily what you dropped out helpful, extraordinarily helpful for the type of work that I do. Uh, she was uh, she she I first uh, was introduced to her through Creative Live, uh, and a couple of years ago, um, more than a couple of maybe about ten years ago at this point, you know they 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 broadcast a, a live uh, photography uh, course with her, and it was just fantastic. I mean, she really takes people through the entire process of being a, a photographer of, of, of women. And then uh, that's really it. I mean, she's really, 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 really good. And she has plenty of tutorials that people can look at. And I just think it's really good. And those are some some people that I thought were just really important to, to know about. And I didn't want to give them as many. And we'll talk about some more with you guys. And I got a few more on my list that I just want to give honorable mention to. And that's really it. The next page or next slide. And that's my work. And I think you can probably see at least a little bit the influences of both Dahl Wolf and uh, Sue Bryce. Uh, not so much the influence of, of Kennedy Carter. Kennedy Carter is just sort of uh, popped onto the scene, uh, you know, about two years ago. And, and these are actually from 2016, 2017. So, uh, you know, it's just really, it's just really, you know, there so that you can kind of see, you know, what I, you know, how I've been influenced by uh, these women. I'm, it's not just talk. I, I really appreciate um, what they've done for photography and I really kind of draw from their work to influence, to, to inform my, my work. And that's really it. That's all my super quick presentation. You guys can ask me questions if you want. And that's, that's really it. No, I, I have no questions. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, uh, so, so, uh, so what do you feel is the, uh, the most, I mean, visually and, and uh, you know, from a prep influence, what do you think was the most uh, impactful lesson that you learned from them, if that was their master class or something like that? From from Pratt? Or yeah. I mean, how, how, how your influence, how did, did they come to you through Pratt or through your own investigation of photography and you, you took on that oh, style? Okay. Abbott, Abbott, Abbott was definitely Pratt. Okay, Pratt was definitely something, some place that really, uh, you know, advocated uh, sort of a, you know, a mid twentieth century uh, New York City aesthetic. Basically, if you photograph New York City in the thirties, forties, fifties, and maybe sometimes the sixties and seventies, the time we were there in the eighties, you would probably study. Uh, them more so the 35 millimeter photographers than the view camera people, but they did give respect to the, the street photographers. And, and I've only shown the architectural work and the civil engineering work of uh, Abbott because I wanted to uh, make sure people understood the uh, seriousness of that particular artist uh, in addition to how she was a, an extraordinarily good technician as well as someone who really could, uh, you know, get a sense of what was going on in the scene. But she really wanted to make sure that a photograph was a document of something. That's something that she advocated. And it should not necessarily be about uh, cool angles and uh, what do they call it? Contortion. She, her words were contortions of, uh, uh, of, of people. So she really wasn't a street photographer in the same way that Pratt did, but, but they did uh kind of uh, introduced me to Abbott. Uh 
Louise Dahl Wolf certainly was a bookstore. I don't think it was a photographer's place. It's probably Barnes and Noble, probably the one that used to be on 18th Street. But I remember, uh, you know, I would, I would go to a bookstore and Louise Dahl Wolf uh, was one of the people that you would that that I would see uh, the book. And, you know, it was, it was a great book, you know. Um, and um, let's see, Sue Bryce introduced through Creative Live because I'm a lifelong learner. Uh, I always am engaged in some sort of, uh, learning activity. I mean, you know, it, it may take me a few months to get back to sort of a, a program, but I, I, I'm more, more, I'm, I'm better at, uh, teaching myself something or going to school or doing something, uh, educational for myself than I am, unfortunately, regular exercise. Yeah. You were heartbroken when Sesame Street went to HBO, didn't you? Weren't you? Uh, yeah, actually, I I, I was, <laughs> and I, I was real. Not only was I heartbroken, uh, I was really upset that that Mitt Romney felt it was uh, valueless and felt that the uh, that Big Bird should get fired. I thought that was oh just, my goodness, that was what he actually said, and he thought it was a humorous campaign thing to say, like a real. He says, "I like Big Bird, but if I become president, he's going to be fired." And uh, I, I thought that was reprehensible. It was just reprehensible. Absolutely. So, That's yep. crazy. What but, other work did Big Bird do? Gosh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hey. well, well, there it is. So uh, <laughs> that's really it. But uh, that was one of my first homework assignments, too, was to watch the first. <laughs> Big Bird? <laughs> no, the first Sesame Street. Oh. So, so. Anyway. So any other questions, guys? I'm good. You good? All right. Let's rock. Let's go to the next All one. All right. Um, am, am I up, Mr. Nelson? I guess I am. Well, uh, this is definitely a homage to, uh, you know, shout out, big ups to uh, female photographers or women photographers. Um, man, they, they, they have just a, a different eye, you know, like, I don't know if that's a fair, but the imagery that they capture. It, it it I can't even say that it has a feminine flair to it, but definitely uh, Ruth Orkin. She did a series uh, uh, American in Italy, and I have this particular picture in my uh, in my collection on the wall. And uh, I spent some years in Italy, and man, yes, they did pinch women on the butt or other places, and uh, definitely uh, um, from young men to old men. A woman by herself was, you know, harassed. Definitely a thing of the, uh, you know, a Me Too movement. And uh, uh, this image pretty much captures that. She, she was a, a, a photojournalist. She did a lot of street work. She did a whole gamut of uh, uh, work, portraits, etc. you name it, uh, both New York and in Europe. And uh, I wanted to throw a big shout out to her for her, for, you know, for the background of it. And I absolutely love this image. I mean, I have sisters, so, you know, I didn't believe, you know, that they went through things like this, you know, until I actually heard somebody say something that made me, you know, really stop and want to ask them. It's like, dude, do you really expect them to do what you're asking them to do right here? I mean, the, the stupidity of it was just mind boggling. But, you know, thank you to Ruth Orkin to be able to capture images like this and show the woman's perspective of photography and uh you know i i really enjoy this picture and it's in my collection all right um big shout out some other other classical photographers who i don't have you know because we're i know it's fair usage and such but um diane arbus going way back her work is a big influence on me and photojournalism and such and uh imogene cunningham these are all photographers that i heard first in the uh, in pratt and i um I did my own research and found out, uh, you know, different ways of lighting, different ways of capturing moments. This this moment is just amazing to me. But um, moving right along, I mean, other photographers like, uh, you know, Cindy Sherman, she does. She's still doing amazing stuff. She we, we were introduced to her because one of our Pratt instructors wouldn't teach her, teach us her work because um, this is not her work, by the way, uh, because she beat him out for a Guggenheim. You know, far be it from me, but, you know, Cindy Sherman was a pretty much rising star and, you know, doing great work. And uh, 
Yeah, that's like not teaching like Andy Leibovitz, who is still, you know, me doing amazing work. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, he, he'd be that as a me. I want to move forward to bringing it today. This is one of my favorite contemporary photographers. Man, the personal friend. Her name is Leslie Andrews. Amazing photographer. Her sister is a, uh, wow. She, uh, I met her up in Sacramento. She was doing amazing work. Uh, but now she's uh, moved to Atlanta. She's doing kids, portraits, fashion. Uh, she's just amazing. Her, her use of light and her creamy tones were just wow. For, for studio work, always kind of knocking my socks off. And I, I enjoy studio work, but she's taking it to a higher high art. I'm more of a photojournalist guy, but when I, when I think about you know people who I know personally that are doing work, Leslie Andrews is at the top of my list. Um, okay, go to the next one. Let's see, this is uh, one of her tear sheets. She does, uh, she's doing a lot of work, she has clientele. She just opened her second studio. So if you're in Atlanta, hey, or this is, this is uh, the age of the internet. Look her up online, Leslie Andrews, L-E-S-L-I-E-A-N-D-R-E-W-S.com and uh, reach out to her. Uh, if you need work done, she does uh, um, branding, branding work. Uh, she's going to do, uh, you know, whatever is necessary. You can see the quality of her work. And uh, I just enjoy all of the way she captures the energy and light and, you know, socializing and socialites and fashion. And just check out our website. Go to the next one. And this is Leslie Andrews. Look at that young woman. She is just amazing to me. She's got stylists. As I said, she's opening up her second studio down there in Atlanta, GA. So if you Need some work done? Give her a call. Now, for me, uh, you can you can go to the uh, group shot now. Just us. Uh, okay. One of one of the ones that uh, you know, way back photographers who's uh, been who was an influence on me and in the early days, not so early, but you know, uh, earlier days of photography. Imogene Cunningham, the way she would do. Uh, capture portraits, you know, and light through blinds and such was just creamy beautiful it could have been shot yesterday very 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 contemporary work and uh my other favorite photographer i hope i'm not i hope i'm not getting any of the photographers you're going to do ken i apologize for that, but i didn't show their pictures <laughs> um imogene uh cunningham and then diane arbus one of her most famous image is a, a, a pair of female twins that was uh like uh from oh I had his name in it, uh, that crazy movie with, uh, uh, here's Johnny. What was the name of that movie? Come on, somebody knows. The Shining. Thank you. Good Lord. Why did that jump out of my head? I was just thinking about it. Anyway, but there's a, there's a set of twins. It's a black and white shot, and they have the same dress on. And it's like those two sisters, you know, Red Rob, Red Rob. You know. Anyway, but uh, those are my favorites. Those are the influence. And God bless women photographers. Keep up the work. Get out there and shoot. That's all I got to say. Just keep shooting. Go ahead. That's all I got. <laughs> any comments? Any any questions? Any any uh anything? I mean, I like Arbus's work. She her portraiture was just funky, and, and she had the same thing about Leslie. She has this quality of light that makes the images look like they are exuding the light. There's there's no. never any really harsh shadows that you could say, oh, the light. You know, oh, she's got a filter to the. It looks like um. The uh, like uh, Barbosa, Anthony Barbosa's work, it makes her lighting makes the subject, the models look like the light is emanating from them. And I just love that creamy textures. And uh, her, her lighting is just, you know, if, if <coughs> photography is writing with light, she is a freaking Langston Hughes of photography for me. She's very, very good. I have a question for you. Um, yes, of the of the group that you just mentioned, um, is uh, Orkin someone that you uh, studied uh, in Pratt, or is it just the one photograph, or you know, what how how influential? Is uh, Orkin, she? Orkin notes. I saw I saw some of her other work. I, I like the way she captured her uh, <laughs> the work that she did in uh, in Europe, and. Um, those were the biggest ones, especially that one, because, uh, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, 
Oof, guys can be pretty merciless, you know, with you know a beautiful woman walking by from and not just a construction site. They might have been the worst because you know they're hey baby, this and it, hey. Yeah, that doesn't so happen today. anymore though. That doesn't happen anymore. Well, that's because of the potential for lawsuits. <laughs> well, yeah, security cameras. So, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't happen anymore. What I should say is you don't see it as much as you did when we were younger. Well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 sexual harassment. You know, we gotta gotta give our ladies props and you know respect. And uh, I heard this one woman say, you know, hey, you know, would would you do would you behave that way if it was reversed? You know, what was it? What would would you like me to say? Hey, baby, baby, you know, to you, how would that make you feel? And you know, listening to my sisters, and I have three right. sisters, and I you know love my mother very much, and. Uh, you know, it's a matter of respect and give folks their due, you know. I hear you. So, I hear you. Not that I haven't been guilty of it. You know, I am, no. I'm, you know, I'm of that age. So, I, you know, but um, it's wrong. You know? Well, and, yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. I agree. You get no argument uh, from me on that. But I was just wondering in terms of the, the scope of the work, like, you know, uh, what, what about Arbus? I mean, you, you, you know, I know you, you mentioned the, the twins, you know, um, are there more pieces that uh, each of these people have photographed that you can go, wow, this is great. I really, this, this, this group of photos is something I really am tied to. Um, no, not, not a lot. I mean, she, she photographed um, imagery of her date and time and uh, similar to other photographers, you know, people in their, um, uh, dressing rooms or in their home life that looked similar to other, uh, photographers of the period or portrait photographers of the period right but uh the ones that stood out to me was definitely the twins because it's this haunting portrait and it's a quality of photograph when all of the elements come together and you make this image that that is iconic you know so um that's one of the biggest ones that i saw and that was that was one as far as impactful that's the one that hit me and said whoa, if I can see something and capture it like that, then I've, then I've done something. Because it's, it's when the moment, the imagery, the, I mean, the black dresses on the stark white, you know, the white headbands on the black hair, it was like everything just kind of came together and made that image just, you know, Real punchy, like a knockout. That mm -hmm. I, I love that image. It's images, certain images, just stick with you, and that's most definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, Mr. Nelson, take it away. Okay. Um, how do I start? Uh, I'll just uh, share female photographers. Where three female talking? photographers. <laughs> Um, one of which I was introduced uh, relatively at Pratt. I think it was around Pratt's time. The other two I came to on my own. And the first one I'll speak to is uh, Dickie Chappelle. Uh, Dickie Chappelle is a war correspondent uh, who served, who actually photographed the war, World War II, through the Vietnam War. And, um, oh, geez, I'm sorry. I keep doing this every time. Just give me a second. It's not what I wanted to do here. Um, there. I've that's a lot it. of screens. There we go. Yeah. You know, it's funny. That's not the screen either. Okay. Well, looking no, in your directory. That's it. Okay. I'm sorry. That's the screen. <laughs> there it is. That's Dickie Chappelle. Okay. Uh, 1959. Uh, and so the thing about her was that she was dogmatic and actually being a war correspondent because she wasn't. Uh, satisfied with being relegated behind the lines. So she forced herself into the front of the lines. Okay. And uh, born in uh, 1918, she actually passed away in Vietnam. Uh, she died during the war, in the war, by shrapnel. She was a casualty? Yeah. She was okay. a casualty. She was the first woman, female casualty of war for a journalist. Wow. So... Uh, so that's uh, her there, and this is another one of her trudging through uh, the swamps of Vietnam. Wow. 
Okay. And what was interesting is that if you think, you know, you sort of think of when you think of war in, in some of uh, some photographers, you sort of may think of Mary Ellen Mark in some ways. And I think uh, they were not contemporaries, but yet um, they both had a sort of sensibility about photographing the same people. <laughs> so we're thinking that that's uh, Che Guevara uh, that she photographed during one of his sessions. And then there is also Fidel Castro. Uh, so she has a reputation for being in the right place at the right time with right people who are movers and shakers for better or for worse uh, in, uh, during the war. And uh, her lifespan centered not only around the war, but that's where I think most of her most powerful images came from. So Dickie Chappelle, a name you should know. Uh, uh, just for the fact that uh, the sheer gravitas that she took in making sure that she went to the front line to photograph what was happening during the wars and the sacrifice that she gave uh, in trying to capture war. Right? Mm. Uh, the second person, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask the question, I'm not even going to ask questions because I just wanted to focus just on the people. So no question. That's why I'm not asking questions because I just wanted to be about the people who are showing. So the second one is Imogene Cunningham. Uh, Imogene came to my understanding or knowledge through Pratt. And so what I, it's funny because I can't speak to any individual image that um, uh, sort of drew me to her, but um, I just think that uh, her history with the F-64 group and the West Coast photographers is enough so that she could stand with the greats, Weston, Adams, uh, and anyone else uh, of that stature of that time and hold steadfast and actually be on the same playing field, the same level of uh, creative endeavors as they were. Uh, the fact that they would actually, that she was actually part of that group speaks to uh, how, uh, what a great person she was uh, photographically. Uh, let's see. Uh, and basically, she's basically she's known for a lot. But for the most part, you'll notice that she's going to be known when you look at or when you Google her work, you'll see uh, uh, horticulture and, and, you know, stuff of like that. But she did portraits, uh, landscapes and all that stuff. So Imogen Cunningham. It's funny because I, I'm hearing her name is actually Imogen Cunningham. So it's not Imogen, but Imogen. So I've been on that Imogen cook and it, they don't. Uh, follow her name with an E at the end. So mm. uh, when I pronounce it, I pronounce it Imogen. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about stepping on the No, no, no. It's not. Yeah. yeah. And um, one other person that I want to speak about, which I don't have, um, I actually don't have any of the images from her, but I speak. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Let me just give you one more thing. Um, Dickie Chappelle was actually um, sort of uh, referenced in a sort of a bio, not a biopic, but a dr drama biopic called No Job for a Woman. So mm. Google the movie No Job for a Woman. And uh, there are three women in, 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 um, who were f army photojournalists uh, who were referenced in that movie. Uh, so No Job for a Woman is the name of the movie. And the... Was it Netflix? Hulu? No, I, I can't tell you. Uh, the woman who fought for a um, who fought to report for World War II. It's a film by Michelle Midori uh, Filion. Michelle M I C H E L E Midori M I D O R I uh, Filion F I L L I O N. And so the last person I'll speak to is actually uh, an an homage to someone who came of note in. Uh, 2007, 2008, 2009, Vivian Meyer. Uh, Vivian Meyer, uh, she was, her, the, the time that she came into prominence was not a time for me to be influenced by her in terms of my early work, but to, to a great degree, she is probably the most influential female person ever in my photographic life. And the way I balance that out is by showing you these things, right? Now, again, okay, so book number one, Vivian Meyer. Too close. Right? Too close. Okay, well. Hey, that's to, focus, your, to, uh, to your okay. shadow photo. Okay, right. So Vivian Meyer, first book, right? 
Okay. Vivian Meyer, eye to eye. It's too, that's out of focus. Out of fo you have the focus. Uh, focus. Oh, okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Eye to eye, okay? Vivian Meyer, street photography, really quick. I'll just do that, okay? Right. Okay. Vivian Meyer, another book, okay? What, what, do, what do you see? You see a repeating uh, pattern I, I here? Think, I think, I may be off base on this, but you're a fan. You, you're Vivian, Vivian Meyer, the color work. Street work. Okay. Both right. the black and white and the color images that yes. she I think you okay. Yeah. So, so um, what I find interesting is that the work is um, powerful, straightforward, poignant. Um, there's the the amount of imagery uh, that I see, I feel is masterful. Uh, is so. The, I mean, it looks like 98% of the things he photographed were masterful photographs, all right? So, and I'm sorry, I'm, I mean, I'm, okay, granted, that's a slight exaggeration, but really one of the most- but he's self -taught, people though, I've ever, right? huh? I'm but sorry? she was self-taught, wasn't she? Self-taught, um, she was in, she actually worked for 40 years as a nanny mm -hmm. and she never promoted herself as a photographer, but she carried around her Leica, her medium formats, Right, and she photographed everything she saw in Chicago, New York. Right now, and, now, now was she a sniper or a machine? She could have been a machine gunner, shooter, photographer. She had to. You so you, you've not that you've seen her contact sheet or you know all of her other shots, but you're saying she was precise with what she would shoot, and every she, shot that she took was she top. was she was well. What we because we haven't seen Meticulous. her her contact sheets. And her images are, uh, first of all, she became, she came into prominence because the photographs that she uh, took over her lifetime were stored away in storage. And she didn't keep up payments for that storage. So oh, no. what was in the storage was put up for sale. And so three, one guy named John Maloof uh, didn't know what was in, in the box, but he purchased the box without seeing it. And when he opened it up, he saw this. And then he presented this, uh, the images. He started to scan them to get an idea of what he was, what they were about. And so he he did a crowdsourcing on on feedback, uh, on Instagram, and I think it was Facebook. And uh, lo and behold, um, he got such an amazing response because the work was that good. And since he basically he was now the owner of these images. Um, now there's some other images that came from th two other collectors. So there, the co whole collection of her work is um, owned by three different collectors. So that is one person who I think, for me, over the last 10 years, is probably the most prolific photographer I've ever run into. Or ever Under, heard of. And what did I said at the beginning, underappreciated. Yes. She, she was someone who lived in anonymity, yeah. photographed an extraordinary body of work, yeah. and after her passing, yep. it becomes part of the history of photography and an extraordinary document of the time of her life. Yes. Okay. And her but she didn't promote her own work. I mean, it, not that she was, you know, no. potentially obscure. No. There's a documentary on um that you can um, um find out more about the history of her. It's called Vi Finding Vivian Meyer. And you can get it on uh, you. I think you can even see excerpts on YouTube. You can actually download it from um, iTunes. Uh, so finding Vivian Meyer. Is it M E Y E R or M Y E R? M A I E R. Oh, oh goodness gracious! Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So uh, 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 again, I cannot say enough for Vivian Meyer. There it is. Yeah. Well, you just did. <laughs> No. Yeah, well, I mean, I got a big problem because, you know, just the way you presented, you know, and you don't really think about it, you know, like, oh, I just grab a camera and get out there and do it, you know, but there were substantial barriers, you know, no job for a woman, you know, come on, it's, you know, go, go type a letter or something, you know, mm -hmm. there was serious bias against, you know, uh, you know, sexual discrimination against women, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, just, uh, just a generation ago, women couldn't vote yeah you know there was there was you know 
And now, thank God for today, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, things that my sisters don't have to face now and kids uh, coming up now don't have to, it, I mean, it's, it's a different, than, different it's set of issues. It was more, it was more like a hundred years ago, but I understand what you mean. You know, there, you know what I'm saying? It, I know. it wasn't that long ago when, you know, wow, it's hard to even think. And then, you know, we're still, we're still grappling with voters right now, you know, so anyway. That's another story. But, but you got you to think about Vivian Meyer's uh, occupation. I mean, she's in a situation where, you know, she has to care for other people's children all day. And maybe the only uh, hobby that she has outside of caring for the children, the only, only time she has to herself is to photograph, just enough to photograph and make a few prints. And that's it. But it can't really go anywhere because it conflicts with her actual life. Yeah. Yeah. And what's, yeah. The good thing about it is that there, there was a sensibility that she knew that you had to keep the images. You had to keep them. You couldn't just discard them as willy nilly and say, Oh, I just did it for fun of it. Okay. Time to throw it away. No, there was something in her nature to keep her archive that meant that that was of a specific value to her to not throw them away at any point in time because they yeah. held something for her. And I think she, in, in that regard, I think she would probably have assumed that at some point in time, they would see the light of day in such a way that they have now. Well, thank God you didn't destroy them. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are a lot of artists that, you know, hey, didn't work out. You know, I might as well just let these go, but thank yeah. God she didn't. Yeah, un yeah. Un unfortunately, her real life played out a lot like that real, mo like that fo that uh, fictional movie, uh, Babette's Feast, mm -hmm. with that one. Well, long story short, there's a, a woman who is a caretaker in a home for two old women, and they treat her poorly, almost like Cinderella, and uh, they te tell her you have to cook cod, and it's in uh, Scandinavia, and so she. She cooks for them for years, you know, horrible, bland Scandinavian food. And then uh, I forgot exactly how she uh, is no longer in servitude to them, but she has an opportunity to leave them. And then what she does is I will cook for you the kind of food I, I really like. So you get a sense of, of what it's like for me and instead of cooking for you. And they have a lot of trepidation about it. And so they let her do it. And it turns out she has this uh, – incredible feast and they love it uh, but she's leaving yeah. the next day and they will never have that <laughs> meal again and if they had only treated her decently mm -hmm. they would have been able to get Got that kind of meal all the years that she Eating like royalty yeah right, right exactly but you know unfortunately we're talking about a real person who for probably similar reasons didn't feel that they could uh you know let that encroach on their real life. Certainly not as harshly, you know, or maybe not certainly, but probably not as harshly. But they've really, you know, you got a job to do. We're rearing kids. You you can't always, you know, can't always, at least certainly not in the 50s, run around promoting your, you know, photographic uh, endeavors if that's not the main point of your uh, vocation. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And just to say that, you know, these are just a few of the many women that uh, I admire and look up to, but I've only yeah. just brought three just to that. So yeah. it's not to say that three, these three are the only. There are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of women out there uh, who, in the history of photography, and currently, uh, who I admire to some degree, who I just love looking at their work. Uh, this is not to say that we won't talk about the women uh, photographers ever again. But I just want to throw some names out while we're on this subject. If you want to throw some more names, uh, I think uh, you mentioned, Mar did someone mention Margaret Burke White already? Uh, Margaret Burke White, uh, uh, Deborah Turberville, Eve Arnold, uh, Consuela Canega, uh, Annie Leibovitz, Greg, you already mentioned her. Uh, who else? Lee Miller. Um, um, oh gosh, who else do I have here? We uh, said Mary Ellen Mark. Uh, and we said, and I even, um, I'll give a shout out to Joyce Tennyson. All right, Dorothea Lang. Um, yeah, yeah, and, you, know, we, we, uh, you know, I would be remiss not to mention a, a photographer uh, who is currently working on flowers. His name is Padma Ingeva. She does these great flower photos, the macro work, and a lot of um, 
Photoshop. She's teaching Nick uh, software classes right now. She's even got a magazine article currently in somewhere. Just find her on Facebook. And uh, also a, a friend of ours in Facebook named Miriam Fields, who was very nice to us too. And of course, Ken and I, we have to mention Leora Kodor, who was an exceptional catalog photographer when we were working as a photographer, uh, photographers at a catalog studio. So that's just to name a few of the people who have kind of, you know, my, you know, who've been in, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say our orbit or there, but we've had uh, intersecting orbits uh, either, you know, intellectually or work or, uh, communications. So that's really it. I, I, you know. Yep. yep. So we got. All right. So I just want to throw the last shout out my friend, Leslie Andrews, L E S L I E Andrews, and E R E W S.com. She's a photographer based in Atlanta. Look her up, check her out and keep shooting. By God, just keep shooting. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. All right. Is this it guys? You want to wrap it up or? Yep. Yep, go ahead, Mark. Okay. All right. We have huh? <laughs> been three black Pratt grads, and we are uh, uh, unfortunately aren't going to be speaking more about women photographers uh, today. We'll get to some more at some other point when it's not just about them being women. Uh, but once again, you know, Ken mentioned it specifically. I said in the beginning, uh, a lot of women photographers are underappreciated in terms of the historical value that they bring to the medium. And uh, we all spend a lot of time talking about the great men photographers that we know. And I was really happy to be able to do this. Thank you, Greg, for suggesting this, lest we forget it was Women's History Month. So that's it. That's it. Rock and roll. Shout out to all you women out there.